she kisses him, he remembers. It's as if his past lives come flooding back to him, much like when we remember who we are by knowing all is love. Welcome to another episode of True Love Talks. First, I'd like to say thank you so much for all of your comments and the discussion that's been going on. I'm really enjoying all the things you're sharing, and I appreciate your enthusiasm for this series. Today, I want to talk about seeing what's not there. The reason I want to talk about this is because it's kind of like a superpower. I think it's closer to like a sixth sense, and... The sixth sense is really kind of something that has been laughed at and seen as unreal or frivolous and not needed in the real world, which couldn't be further from the truth. Now, the first instance for me personally, and I'll share my personal experiences so that for anybody who happens to not know what I'm talking about, then this would be helpful for you. But hopefully most of you do know what I'm talking about. But I do know that many people who are physically minded or relying on physical evidence to prove certain things is partly because they lack imagination. I don't mean that as an insult, it's just a statement of fact. And partly because it's not in front of them, so they can't see it. Physically minded people need hard evidence put right in front of them. However, most of the time they can't see it even when it is right in front of them, and so When we go to show them something, they don't believe it because they can't see it. And the reason for that is that their vision is impaired by their perception. How does their vision get impaired by their perception? Through spellcasting. Your ability to see through the veil starts with being able to accurately see what is in front of you because so many people can't do it. If you show someone a photo of the tin can contraption that allegedly flew to the moon, Space lovers will explain until the cows come home how that heap of junk got off the ground. They are under a spell that won't allow them to see the picture clearly, and their ego gets in the way because they have tied their identity to being smart, too smart to believe that they've been duped, and so they aren't seeing it clearly. There are a lot of deceptions that are carried out simply by manipulating our perception. Being able to see what is and not what we're told what is, is kind of like a superpower. (laughs) Right now it is anyway. I mean, this should be very straightforward. You should be able to see what is. And I think I've mentioned this before, that some people have a warped sense of perception. They don't see what is. There's a famous quote where somebody said, you don't see things as they are, you see things as you are. However, it is possible for you to see things as they are. But yeah, a lot of people, they have they suffer from a form of distortion where an event will happen. They will make it about them, but it has nothing to do with them. They will extract fragments of evidence to support their perspective, ignoring everything else, because they use cognitive bias to support their argument, but they ignore the things that disprove the argument, and they just take the pieces that support their argument. And so they distort reality to back up their view of reality. And it's definitely not a matter of, well, everybody does this. No, that's not what I'm talking about. These people distort reality and cannot see things clearly. Sixth sense is usually tied to the idea of people having like a psychic abilities. Psychic abilities, intuition, sixth sense, they're connected, but I think they're all individually different. To me, uh, sixth sense is like you feel something. You can sense when someone else is in the room. You can sense if there's a ghost in the room. You can sense if you're in danger or if a loved one is in danger. You can sense when something good is coming. You can sense when you walk in a room that the energy's off. It's using your energy field. That's how I perceive the sixth sense. Intuition is a gut feeling, a gut reaction. You feel emotion and it strikes a chord within you. You meet someone and you get a bad feeling about them. And 
your intuition tells you this person is someone I shouldn't hang out with. You get a good feeling about them and you feel like, I have a good feeling about this person. I think this is a good job. I should take this job. Or I think this is a good company to work at. I, I get a good feeling about it. So it's connected to feeling. It's connected to emotion. But it's also connected to mind. It's very clear. You get a, you get a very clear message. And it's quite simple to read. So it's like a positive negative charge. Whereas sixth sense is a little bit more subtle. A sixth sense is more varied and... Okay, so if you look at intuition as a yes, no, black and white, sixth sense is all the colors of the rainbow. It deals with all of your chakras. The other aspect of like psychic abilities goes beyond that. The psychic abilities gets more detailed, allows you to see way beyond the black and white, the rainbow, the psychic abilities. You can see it, taste it, smell it touch it like it's it's like you are in another world you are able to almost physically be there it's everything except the physical and yet you can use all of your senses to read what isn't here so that's how i explain the difference between the three i'll give you a few examples of these senses coming into play with the truth when i was about seven my teacher said that I read between the lines and I did not know what she meant by that at the time. But it sure does come in handy right now. So when I started researching the truth, one of the things I did was I delved into history. The reason I went into the origins of mankind was specifically started with the Bible. I wanted to know who wrote the Bible and why. And so I started on a journey to find out answers on that. And then that led me to Egyptian history, Greek history, um, Hebrew history, Sumerian, you know, all of it. So while I was on this rabbit hole, I felt time collapse. It was a very interesting feeling and it felt like I was traveling back in time. I also noticed that there were patterns as I was reading history it would repeat itself. It was as if the historians had used a Photoshop clone tool and they just loved the copy paste. It gave the impression that history was fake because the stories were identical over and over again. However, I don't think they are fake in the sense that they happened on the world stage, much like the things that are happening on the world stage today. So they actually happened, but they're staged. So that's why they repeat over and over again. This feeling of traveling back in time, um, I kind of shelved it. I just stored it in my memory and it came up again as, a, as I was making videos. And I've mentioned this before that I had this feeling of time collapsing while I was making videos and the elements that I needed to make the videos would come up as and when I needed them. And if a video wasn't ready, I would sense that, which is another feeling that I have. This It's like a sixth sense that this video is not ready, so wait. As I've mentioned before, whenever I did that, the right element would appear. So sometimes the element that would appear would be something that I needed and it wouldn't have been created until the day before. So that's why the delay. It was as if the video that I was creating had created all of the other elements in the past so that I could create that video today, which sounds ridiculous, but that's how it felt. And then when I made the video on parallel universes, there was so much evidence that supported that that it blew my mind. And then there were other videos that I had done as well that ended up supporting that. And so it was it was kind of validated in a way, which is still strange to me. And I think this is also wrapped up in the sense of time, of understanding what time is and how time works. If you can get a sense of time, like a feel for it, because Time does have a feeling. If you are busy doing something that you love, time flies. If you're busy doing something that you hate, time lags. It's, it's taking forever. There are times where people feel like a minute is 
hours long. Let's say you're in an accident or something and everything suddenly goes in slow motion. Time isn't actually going that slow. It's your perception of time. It's how time feels to you. So your mind is slowing down time because time is created in the mind. This is why everything is mind. Parallel universes are split mind, dimension. This is why I think it's called dementia, but it, I think it's dimension. You're seeing through the split mind. You are able to also travel back in time because time is created in the mind because all is mind. And the only way we make sense of this place is by stretching it out in time linearly or cyclically because time is a, is a loop but it's also a DNA spiral staircase. So if you are able to get a sense of time, you are able to travel in time with your mind. So for example, if you change your perception of something that happened in the past, you are able to change your present and your future. A good example of this is The Atom Project, which is a movie with Ryan Reynolds. Inspiration is one of the things that's tied into this. Um, there's a lot of things that just come to me as a result of connections I've made or meditations or things that I've been focusing on. And I'm not sure if this is what people are referring to as downloads because some people say that they get massive downloads, like a lot of information dumped on them at once. And I've had that happen to me, but I kind of see it as the same sort of thing as inspiration or a result of meditation. Um, so yeah, to me, like I've been in situations where I've been meditating or thinking on something or I've been watching a movie and something had cracked something open in me or triggered something in me. Like the the Pharaoh Tarot video I did when I was watching that movie about the school of good and evil, something about that triggered something in me and I started sobbing. And like I've said before, a lot of times you will... You will feel the frequency first and then it will come to you in the form of emotion. And if you can't articulate it, it will stay in emotion. And when something triggers you, it triggers that emotion because it's locked there. It's triggering a memory. So your memories are stored in water. Water is emotion and it's stored in our bodies. And so when you have something like that comes along, triggers a memory and it's locked in your body and your emotion, You'll get upset because you're not quite sure what you're seeing. You're not quite sure how to put it into words yet. And then you'll put it into words. Then you'll be able to articulate it. It's like, it's there, but I can't form it yet. I know what it is, but I can't form it yet. And so putting it into words helps to solidify it more, which is exactly how things are formed here. Things are formed here from frequency to emotion to words to verbs to creation to action to to light to, you know, manifestation. For example, uh, I would be focusing on a subject or discussing something with a friend of mine and suddenly would get struck with an insight into something. Like early on in my truth journey, I was struck by the inspiration that all the head CEOs of the major corporations in the world are fake faces. And that's to cover up the fact that the government owns them all. So nobody told me this. It wasn't written down anywhere. Nobody showed it to me. You can't prove it. No one's ever going to write you a letter proving that these people are planted and they're fake. You have to be able to read between the lines. You have to be able to put the pieces together yourself. Now people are saying this, but in terms of evidence and hardcore evidence, they're, they're not going to come forward and have a written confession to tell you, oh yeah, this is what we do. But you can, if you research, you can read between the lines because you can see how copycat these people are, how fake their life stories are, how fake their rise to fame is their family connections and they are related to famous people or friends with famous people. They're always from a certain type of family, you know, like Zuckerberg or Musk or Gates. All of those people, they have a very similar kind of story. So it, the markers are all there. 
it's not hard to see, but it isn't going to be a written confession. So there's a lot of these sorts of things where you will have certain pieces of the puzzle and you have to put the puzzle together and your brain will just fill in the gaps. There's little missing pieces, so your mind just fills in the gaps. And sometimes your mind just does it automatically. There's been a lot of times where I'm not doing anything, like maybe watching television or just sitting here chatting about something completely irrelevant with a friend, and I'm hit with revelation. And one of these revelations was the Venus revelation. A lot of times these answers come from asking the right question. This comes from my law of attraction practice and study learning to ask the right question because if you're not getting the right answers it's because you're asking the wrong question so I would train myself so that I tuned into the right answers and when you ask a question or when a problem is created the solution is created with it so always look for the solution anyhow I was asking the question why are all these events fake they have to be fake for a reason And so I wanted to understand what's what's really going on here. And then that just came to me. Another thing that comes with this territory is mapping and pattern recognition. So once you get a sense for how this universe works and flat earth is a key to this, if you do not understand flat earth and how this universe works in the physical sense, it's gonna be very hard for you to put the pieces together. Flat earth is a huge key to everything and it gets easier to recognize the patterns and understand why historians use the clone tool because everything is repeated everything is a microcosm of the macrocosm everything starts to become pretty obvious the relationships between people um, mapping one story onto another you can see how they line up which is very similar to taking a couple of movies that are Uh, remakes of one another like Alice in Wonderland and The Matrix you can line up the major plot points and you can line up the major characters and see how they match it's identical to that once you understand these stories from an esoteric perspective you can take that and then map it on to the creation myths and understand the structure of the universe and how that plays out in all aspects of life Another major piece is decoding. I really encourage anybody who's interested in the truth to decode events yourself. Um, This is why I don't just tell you what they mean. I go to the trouble of showing you how to do it yourself because it's important that you can do it yourself. Songs are pretty obvious. Song lyrics are like pretty blatant. You don't really need to decode those. You just need to understand what it is they're talking about. So when you look at songs and you have a sense of this universe and the esoteric meaning behind everything, the 911, the IXXI, the grand universe story, and when you read song lyrics, it should be fairly obvious what they're talking about. If you don't understand, then you're not going to see it. You know, things like referring to the moon as she, somebody who isn't aware of the universe that the moon is feminine and what the moon represents they're not going to see it they're not they're just going to say well i don't understand like who's this woman they're singing about decoding movies and um, tv shows and news events i find a wealth of information because it's a multimedia medium you can show things visually and say things so you can appeal to more than one of the senses but also you feel them talking through the television at you so there's like a sixth sense coming through on that level too i'll get to that later um but if you understand that everything in this universe is one story it's the one song the universe and it is about ixxi 9 11 the raising of the christos opening your pineal your awakening and returning home If you understand that it's about that, it's easier to read the movies. It's easier to read the shows. It's easier to see the codes. And if you don't understand that, the codes will tell you that because that's how I found out. But I also knew this because of knowing Flat Earth and the esoteric knowledge of what IXXI means and understanding the single digit code, the tarot, um, Fibonacci sequence, what numbers mean the gods 
like all of that stuff all ties together so having a well-rounded perspective of all of these things definitely helps if you're new to decodes i put my decodes on my backup channel for the most part now but i do have movie decodes on my website if you're new to decodes and you want to figure out how to do it i'm not concerned with whether it's fake or not because they're all fake but if your main concern is are they fake or not there's plenty of shills out there who will cater to that and then they will show you the Freemasonic codes along with it. But they will never tell you what the Freemasonic codes mean. When you want to go deeper, you got to figure out what the Freemasonic codes mean. And then dig into the etymology. Etymology will tell you so much. I don't know, maybe some people don't understand why etymology matters. Like, I can understand that. The words that they pick is it's telling a story to the superficial level and hiding the real story because words have multiple meanings. Words have multiple meanings to cover up the code. The code is written in the stars. All words, numbers, letters, they all stem from the zodiac, which comes from the stars. And so when you understand that, you look to the etymology to see the hidden message that's behind the fake message of these hoax events. So when you first start looking into this, you'll probably decode a lot of things that are irrelevant and see things that don't really matter or you'll read things into something that's not really there and that's fine. Like, I did that too. But after a while, you start to be able to see the words. They stand out to you. You know what words are codes. You know what to look up. You know what to look into and they just jump out at you. Part of that's pattern recognition and part of that is the sixth sense. They just pop out. Because a lot of these codes popped out to me before I understood what I was doing. <laughs> After you've gotten to that stage where you've pulled out all of the codes and you're probably looking at a bit of a jumbled mess and you don't know what it means, then stand back, look at it a little bit in terms of a story. What is it telling you? What are the commonalities? How does it fit together as a story? And then the irrelevant codes that you pulled out will fall by the wayside. The story will start to take shape. And you don't have to decode everything. You just want to get a sense of what the story is underneath. Yeah, so it'll, it'll take practice, but you'll be able to see the truth beneath the illusion. One major big one <laughs> is seeing, seeing the TV talk to you. This is a major skill, a major ability that people will tell you you're crazy if you believe the TV is talking to you, but it does talk to you. And don't let anybody tell you you're crazy if you think that that's what's going on. Now, understanding why the TV is talking to you and what is actually going on with the TV is a whole different kettle of fish. Some people will will fall into paranoia about this and schizophrenia and it will it will get to them so don't let that happen to you uh, the way I see it is it's just an aspect of this mind created consciousness creation again because we perceive things as physical and real there's probably a physical explanation for what's happening but if you look at my videos on the television there's a playlist I've explained it in many different videos. It's like the other side communicating with us and they're using electronic media to communicate. So they'll communicate through the radio or through the television or through the internet. I don't trust that the internet is communicating organically because of the AI that's embedded in the internet now. A lot of things will pop up in your feed that are placed there based on the AI listening to you, like if you have your phone next to you and you're talking like I am, it will pick up what you're saying and then you'll go on to Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or what have you and ads related to that or content related to that will pop up in your face and it'll spook you, but it's the AI. It's artificial intelligence. It's, it's a computer program. It's not organic. The way I see the television and the radio is organic. It's not generated by some artificial intelligence. And that is 
your consciousness speaking to you. Or you can look at it as the other side speaking to you. From what I have gathered from decodes and everything is that our loved ones are on the other side. I do think we will be reunited with our loved ones. And I do think that a lot of the people here are just illusions. So like with WandaVision, the radio was communicating with her through the song. And he was on the other side of the field. So it's something like that. But... It can also be, because this whole place is a consciousness creation, it can be your consciousness. I don't think that it's an evil entity. I think it's a beneficial entity. I've had nothing but help, nothing but guidance and positive things. No negativity whatsoever. I've shared the things that I've had with you. Uh, I am a little bit more receptive to receiving information from the TV, and the TV knows this. Like, I mean... (laughs) It just sounds so ridiculous. But anyway, um, whatever the TV is, whatever's going on with the television, they know this. They know they can reach me through the television, which is why I get messages through the TV, which is why certain things that I watch communicate themes and allegories and messages to me because they know that I watch these shows and they know that I would be receptive to the message. They know they can reach me this way. I'm fine with that, which is why... There have been television shows, like I said, Chateau Diaries, Dispatches from Elsewhere. There were moments where the the characters were referring to me, talking about me, the viewer. Several other shows I've had this happen. But then, you know, one of the biggest ones was when I was watching the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. And Johnny Depp made a big deal out of emphasizing certain words so that I would pay attention And that was what led me to investigate his life story and cracked open a huge, huge revelation for me. So it's possible that he was signaling to anyone who would pay attention, anybody who was receptive. I happen to be receptive and I know that there are not many of us. There's not many people who are receptive to receiving this kind of information through the television. But I have seen people who have seen the comparison between Amber and Dark Shadows, Angelique. So some people are seeing it, which is great. The more people, the better. All I know is that the more receptive you are, the more open-minded you are, the more likely you are to receive this kind of information. And again, this is something that is not visible to anyone but you. So yeah, you need to be able to read between the lines. You need to be able to see what's not there. And this is how you see through the veil. And then when you get to your, what I say is the psychic level, when you're able to travel in time, use telepathy, remote view, see your past lives, out-of-body experiences, astral travel, lucid dreaming. So yeah, there's there's so many things that... (laughs) we forgot how to do. So I'd like to hear what are your experiences that you've had with your sixth sense that this has led you to discovering certain truths that are invisible. I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great night. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.